well students we will learn about the heritage city development and augmentation yojana in today's session hello students welcome to the course urban local governance i am dr padmavati assistant professor department of management studies college of engineering in the anna university chennai after going through this module you will be able to explain about the heritage city development and augmentation yojana the scheme background key features of the scheme implementation structure components and achievements and outcomes of hri day which is heritage city development and augmentation yojana this scheme is an initiative launched by government of india in 2015 to preserve and develop the heritage cities and their cultural heritage the scheme aims to preserve and restore the cultural heritage of the country by providing infrastructure development beautification and other related amenities the heritage city development and augmentation yojana in short what we call it as rede scheme which covers about 12 cities across india namely ajmer amritsar amravati badami dwaraka gaya kanchipuram madura puri varanasi velangani and warangal this module will give an overview of rede scheme its application modalities functions and outcomes of its implementation in our country if you look at the rationale behind the scheme as we all know india is a home to diverse cultural heritage including monuments temples forts and other architectural structure that reflect the rich cultural heritage of the country however due to neglect and lack of infrastructure many of these heritage structures have fallen into disrepair the heritage city development and augmentation yojana scheme was launched to address these issues and preserve country's cultural heritage the scheme aims to promote heritage tourism and generate employment opportunities in the heritage cities the scheme also aims to improve the quality of life of the residents of the heritage cities by providing better infrastructure facilities and services the heritage development of cities is not about development and conservation of few monuments but also development of the entire city its planning its basic services quality of life of its communities its economy and livelihood cleanliness and security reinvigoration of its soul and explicit manifestation of its character so in order to make the cities vibrant competitive and address some of the stated challenges a planned approach is necessary for tapping an unlimited potential underlying in tourism and heritage sector unleashing the power of skillful artisans and traditional economy the scheme the rede offers tremendous opportunity towards an integrated inclusive and sustainable development of some heritage in india so rede offers a paradigm shift in india's approach to city development bringing together urban planning economic growth and heritage conservation in an inclusive and integrated manner with focus on livelihoods skills cleanliness security accessibility and service delivery under the scheme as i said there are 12 cities have been uh, admitted and have been identified for development the mission period of rede scheme ended on 31st march 2019 the scheme has supported development of core heritage linked civic infrastructure projects which includes revitalization of urban infrastructure for areas around heritage religious cultural and tourism assets of the cities these initiatives include development of water supply sanitation drainage waste management approach roads food paths street lights tourist conveniences electricity wiring landscaping and such citizen services as well if you look at the scheme statement it states that to preserve and revitalize soul of the heritage city to reflect the city's unique character by encouraging aesthetically appealing accessible informative and secure environment so to undertake strategic and planned development of heritage cities aiming at improvement in overall quality of life with specific focus on sanitation security tourism heritage revitalization and livelihoods retaining the city's cultural identity so there are some strategies the scheme has been adapted so let's look at some of the scheme strategies it is a central sector scheme with 100% funding coming from central government it the cities will be required to prepare heritage management plan for the city and develop 
DPRs for identified projects for availing assistance under the scheme. The projects will be executed by PWOs and uh, NGOs of repute and fund will be allocated to executing agencies by Ministry of Urban Development on the recommendations of Mission Directorate. And it is designated as National Project Management Unit for Reday Scheme which is NIUA and will function as a Secretariat for Mission Directorate for the scheme. So, City PMU will be procured by National Mission Directorate and will function as a Secretariat to City Mission Directorate. If you look at the objectives of the scheme, the main objective of Reday is to preserve character of the soul of heritage city and facilitate inclusive heritage linked urban development by exploring various avenues including and involving private sector. Specific objectives if you look at planning, development and implementation of heritage sensitive infrastructure, service delivery and infrastructure provisioning in historic city core areas, preserve and revitalize heritage wherein tourists can connect directly with city's unique character, develop and de document a heritage asset inventories of the cities, natural, it may be natural, cultural, living and built heritage as a basis for urban planning, growth and service provisions and delivery. Also, it includes implementation and enhancement of basic services delivery with focus on sanitation services like public conveniences, toilets, water taps, street lights with use of latest technologies in improving the tourist facilities amenities. And it also includes local capacity enhancement for inclusive heritage based industry. It helps to create the effective linkages between tourism and cultural facilities and also the conservation of natural built heritage. The urban heritage adaptive rehabilitation and maintenance including appropriate technologies for historic buildings retrofitting which establish and manage the effective public private partnerships for adaptive urban rehabilitation. And it also includes the study uh, scheme strategy also includes the development and promotion of core tangible economic activities to enhance the avenues of livelihoods amongst the stakeholders. This would also include necessary skill development amongst them including making public spaces accessible and developing cultural spaces, making cities informative with the use of modern ICT tools, making cities secure with modern surveillance and security apparatus like CCTV etc. Also it, the mission includes the strategies to increase accessibility that is physical access through roads as well as universal design and intellectual access that is digital heritage and GIS mapping of historical locations, tourist maps and routes. So far we have just um, looked at the brief of this particular scheme and let's check our understanding on what is the objective of heritage city development and accommodation yojana scheme. Your options are A. Achieving garbage free status to ensure women empowerment, to preserve and restore cultural heritage of the country, to reduce poverty and vulnerability of urban poor. The answer is to preserve and restore the cultural heritage of the country. Now let's look at the components of Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana scheme. So this scheme it will broadly focus on four theme areas that is physical infrastructure, institutional infrastructure, economic infrastructure, social infrastructure for reviving and revitalizing the soul of Heritage City. The projects can be funded directly or through support from other stakeholders including private sector. However, broad indicative list of components under the scheme is mentioned um, in the following slides which can further be refined based on the need of city under the broad theme areas. Let's look at the broad theme areas which has been identified under the scheme. Number one, heritage documentation and mapping leading to heritage management plan which includes listing of heritage assets of the city which is tangible as well as intangible tangible and intangible heritage recordings and documentations, profiling of infrastructure services at and around heritage areas, GIS based mapping of cultural and natural heritage assets and it also includes developed heritage management plan which includes conservation and adaptive reuse plans. In addition to heritage documentation mapping leading to heritage management plan theme, we also have heritage revitalization linked to service provisions. In this theme, Revitalization of heritage, historic areas, gut areas, temple, mosque, basilica areas, kunz, fakir, improvement of surrounding areas for safety, stability and conservation etc. Restoration, rehabilitation of heritage monuments linking with service provisions at community density levels will be included. 
and provisions of basic services such as improved sanitation as toilets, drinking water facilities, parking, solid waste management, etc. needs will be considered. It also includes linkage with city infrastructure, transfer water and wastewater management and treatment plan will also be included under this theme. It also includes development of heritage walks, religious trials, street furniture including shifting of hanging wires, poles and transformers and development cultural events, fairs, festival grounds and associated infrastructures, development of city museum, interpretation centers and cultural spaces, improvement of roads, pathways, public transportations and parking in the heritage area including the provisions for last mile connectivity, pedestrianization of tourist attraction areas, solar and battery operated vehicles etc will also be included in this particular theme. So in addition to the first two themes we also have city information, knowledge management and skill development theme. So in this theme it will be covered that local capacity strengthening for heritage management linked to city planning and overall growth followed by development of websites, IECs, outreach materials etc. CCTV cameras and provisions of Wi-Fi, direction pillars, images, digital information kiosks, skill development of tour operators, guides, local artisans and women entrepreneurs are uh, will be the main focus of this particular theme. It also includes support, marketing, promotion, development of lo local heritage in, which includes women managed cottage industries, marketing centers, heritage sensitive building codes and urban design regulations. And it also includes city maps, brochures, digital displays, information boards, Wi-Fi access zones, city heritage infrastructure such as web page, heritage link to mobile applications, software, web based interface for heritage conservation, adaptation and management etc. And this theme is also including the catalog and brochure for historic and new constructions in order to preserve the characteristics of heritage buildings and cultural landscapes. So memorandum of agreements if you see. We have a um, tripartite agreement that is to facilitate the effective implementation of the product at tripartite agreement with respect to urban local bodies, states and Ministry of Urban Development will be signed. And the agreement will be prescribed the broad contours of the project and obligations are on the part of each party that is centre states and urban local bodies. And it all, the agreement is also having a bipartite agreement which for utilizing the service of executing agencies the national mission directorate will enter into an agreement with the respective executing agencies so the agreement will prescribe the terms and conditions under which the services will be provided the type of services and terms of payment etc will be covered under this agreement and if you look at the institutional arrangements um, this particular scheme will be planned developed and implemented under the aegis of ministry of urban development with NAUA playing the role of national project management unit, a robust and in interactive mechanism for coordination with ministries like culture, tourism, water resources, housing and urban poverty elevations, planning commissions and with state governments, urban local bodies would be brought out to ensure the convergence of the activities so that the development happens in the planned manner. And for this, a high power national empowered committee constituted at the central level. Uh, it has the representations from all line department agencies will also involve technical research academic and subject expertise at various levels the project largely executed through public work organizations central public sector units state para status or spvs and ngos of repute and what you get to see is the implementation framework whatever we have just seen from starting from national empowered uh, committee and to the city mission directorate. So if you look at the roles and responsibilities, the scheme will be structured for planning and implementations to the following institution structures such as at the national level, a Hiride National Empowered Committee, in short what we call as HNEC. So a committee co-chaired by the Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development and Chief Secretary of Respective State will be acting as indicative members for this particular committee at national level. So HNEC will provide overall sanction, approval, guidance and advisory role to the scheme. If you look at the broad roles and responsibilities of this particular team, it, it needs to initiate the vision and chalk out a roadmap and key objectives of the scheme. And this, this will also provide a platform for exchange of ideas and other objectives as notified. 
oversee all operations, steer, review and monitor the overall performance of the scheme and provide an enabling framework and review progress against time goals, ensure that no duplication of sanctioning project works or activities under this scheme and under different schemes of Government of India. Also, recommend the mid-course correction in the implementation tools as and when required. Undertake quarterly review of the activities of the scheme including budget implementation, pre-preparation of heritage plans, coordination with other missions and schemes etc. And oversight and review of proposed ongoing projects are part of this particular um, HNEC's roles and responsibilities. If you look at National Commission Directorate, the mission directorate will be headed by additional joint secretary level officers. So, joint secretary level officers will act as a mission director till the time post of mission director is sanctioned. And it, they will be empowered to take up the activities of preparation of heritage management plans, investment plans, implementation of these schemes, projects through various public work organizations, etc. It may also enter into an agreement with the different technical, financial and other institutions in achieving the objective of the scheme. And if you look at the city level advisory and monetary committee, what we call it as CLAMC. So, the composition of city level advisory and monitoring committees will be made under this scheme and it will be notified by the state government. So, the convener for the meeting will be municipal commissioners shall have the representation of all stakeholders as well. And if you look at the key responsibility of this committee, it will provide a platform for exchange of ideas and objectives and oversight and review of the projects oversee and review the monitor of the performance of the scheme, provide an enabling framework by facilitating for coordination between centre, state and other stakeholders, coordination with local committees and communities, recommend mid-course correction and implementation as and when required. All these are considered to be the key responsibility of this uh, CLAMC. Let us look at the urban local body mission directorate. A city or uh, urban local body level mission directorate would be constituted and notified at the state and ULB. It will be chaired by the officer not below the rank of chief executive officer or municipal commissioners. The key responsibilities of this particular um, committee is to facilitate or this particular mission is to facilitate uh, in preparation and finalization of the heritage management plan responsible for coordination between center implementing agencies for implementation of the projects, facilitate coordination for smooth implementation of the product. Um, ensure implementation of different detailed project report components, quality assurance, coordination with local committees and communities, etc. If you look at the procedure for uh, project preparation and implementation, the projects and proposal can flow from two levels based on the need assessment and stakeholders interaction. So, these levels are at the level of national mission directorate and city mission directorate. The project will be selected based on their linkages with overall heritage development of the city it will be ensured that no duplication of the work will be done. And it may also be certified that DPO for such project is not being submitted to any other authority. The proposal thus received would be technically financially appraised. So, the project appraisals uh, by scrutinized by National Mission Directorate with the support of NPMU so that the technical soundness and economic viability will be implemented. And project implementation, uh, this particular scheme will be uh, or being a central sector scheme will be implemented under the overall control and direction of Ministry of Urban Development. A national mission directorate will decide the execution agency for various works to be undertaken under the scheme. If you look at the funding of the projects, the fund will be released to executing agencies by Ministry of Urban Development. Out of the total annual allocation of the project fund available with the scheme will be distributed as mentioned components. So, as per Hiriday Pilot City's project implementation, it will be about 85 percent and uh, with the NPMUs about 3 percent, capacity development for heritage cities about 3 percent, the development management plans about 4 percent, IEEC is 4 percent and EA administrative and other expenses would be for about 1 percent. Additional resources, if you see the mission directorate will further in, uh, initiate capacity building activities including the training and enhancing interlinkages within the cities states and institutes of the excellence. So, for this advisories and toolkits would be issued. The coordination with other stakeholders such as World Bank, UNESCO, Cities Alliances, UN Habitat, Ministry of Environment and Forest, HUP, Culture, Tourism would be reinvigorated for development of heritage cities. Now, let us look at the submission of utilization certificates. So, the National Mission Directorate through project execution agencies will be responsible for submission of 
utilization certificates based on the implementation schedule given in the original project proposal. So monitoring progress of projects sanctioned under the scheme may be done by the Ministry of Urban Development. Uh, they will uh, do a periodical monitor with designated officers and will, uh, NPMU will develop monitoring frameworks and tools to assess the mission directorates. Third party monitoring mechanism would be employed by National Mission Director to keep track of the progress of the projects and schemes. Now let's look at the outcomes of the everyday scheme. So there are some specific outcomes. This particular scheme has been envisaged. So clean and improved sanitized environment, improved basic urban infrastructure at existing and emerging tourist destinations and gateways, improved sanitation standards at natural and cultural tourist attractions with the convenience and safety for visitors, properly conserved, revitalized and beautified heritage monuments, greater participation by local communities in tourism related economic livelihood activities, heritage resources are mainstreamed with city systems and city economy, improvement in the service level benchmarks indicators for urban service delivery, increase in the inflow of tourists to cities, increase in the duration of stay of the tourist in the town, improvement in social safety and reduction in crime, substantial improvement in local economy and quality of life of its communities. This is the latest um, data with respect to the number of projects implemented, funds allocated, released and utilized under the everyday scheme. Um, this is the latest data as I said it, has, it was published in two, uh, January 2022 under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So here we get to see like how much of amount has been sanctioned, how much of funds has been released um, uh, up to date. All the details have been as we can able to get it from this data. So just to brief you or give a summary about what we have achieved so far from this Hiride scheme is about the scheme has been successful in preserving and restoring the cultural heritage of the country and promoting heritage tourism. The scheme has resulted in the restoration and conservation of more than 400 heritage structures across the 12 heritage cities. The scheme has also resulted in the development of more than 140 tourism related infrastructure projects including interpretation centers, museums and tourist amenities. This scheme has also contributed to the development of traditional crafts, skills related to the heritage cities. The scheme has provided training and capacity building programs to local artisans and craftsmen resulting in the development of more than 50 traditional craft skills. The scheme has also promoted the development of local businesses and provided employment opportunities in the heritage cities. The scheme has also contributed to the sustainable development of the heritage cities. It has also promoted waste management, sanitation and traffic management resulting in the improvement of overall quality of the life of the residents of the heritage cities. Some of the notable achievements of the scheme as just to brief about is the conservation and restoration of heritage structures in the selected 12 heritage cities. For instance, in Varanasi, the scheme has restored the Kashi Vishwanath temple complex which is one of the most sacred places of worships by Hindus. Similarly, in Amritsar, the scheme has restored the iconic golden temple which is one of the most visited tourist attractions in India. Development of tourism related infrastructure. So, the scheme has contributed to the development of several tourism inf related infrastructure projects in the heritage cities. For example, in Puri, the scheme has developed a world-class interpretation center which provides visitors with information on the history and culture of the cities. Similarly, in Warangal, the scheme has developed a tourist information center which provides visitors with information on the city's heritage sites and attraction. In the area of promotion of traditional crafts and skills, the schemes have promoted the traditional craft and skills of the heritage cities by providing training and capacity building programs to the local artisans and craftsmen. For example, in Madura, the scheme has provided training to local artisans in the art of stone carving, resulting in the development of a new range of products that are now being sold in local markets and tourist shops. The scheme has promoted sustainable development in the heritage cities by promoting waste management, sanitation and traffic management. For example, in Amravati, the scheme has developed a solid waste management system which has resulted in the reduction of waste generation and improved cleanliness in the city. 
The scheme has contributed to the growth of tourism in the heritage cities by enhancing the visitors' experience and promoting heritage tourism. For example, in Ajmer, the scheme has developed a heritage walk which takes visitors on a tour of the city's historic sites and monuments. So far, we have learned about heritage city development and augmentation yojana. So let's have a check on our understanding through this question. What is HNEC stands for? Your options are Kride National Empowerment Mission, Commission, Option B Heritage National Evaluative Commission, Option C Human Empowerment Commission, Option D Kride National Empowered Committee. Your answer is Option D which is Kride National Empowered Committee. So just to summarize we have learned about the Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana um, and its objectives, key features of the scheme implementation structure, components of the scheme, also achievements arrived so far with respect to um, heritage city development and augmentation in India. Thank you. Mm -hmm.